All right, guys, thanks for taking some time out. Uh, Eric, I appreciate you and your orange shirt, despite what I may or may not. I, I just got to bring it into, I got to bring it into context. But anyways, so uh, really not a whole lot changing. I want to give a couple of new little bits, especially with regard to the, really the first week of August in terms of updated market figures. Uh, and I wanted to point to a couple of more high level macro national topics that could help you guys have some conversations not only with current clients that you're working with and also too with prospective clients just to have on your radar because there's a lot of very telling information both from the national association of home builders and from realtor.com all the research that's coming out you know really on a monthly level we've got much more clarity in terms of how july shook out but i wanted to share with you where we are thus far through seven days in August. So without further ado, what we are going to tackle is the slides. And everybody's favorite part of this whole entire presentation is watching me fumble around sharing my screen. To everybody's favorite part. And away we go. Okay, so in terms of where we are seven days in to August, there has been a very, very, very consistent trend, obviously, to uh, increase buyer activity that all is nothing that's news to anybody. We all know that showings have crested back to their pre-COVID levels. In fact, they've exceeded pre-COVID levels. You're looking at a number that's about three and a half percent higher in terms of showings on average than we were in February of 2020. And we all know that February was one of the best Februaries that we have ever had on record. What we're also seeing is while the national market is down year over year, so existing home sales are down 8% nationwide, here in Greenville, we're up almost 6% year over year. And that's a testament to not only the great real estate professionals in this marketplace, but it's also a testament to the economy that we are very blessed to be a part of. We are in a position where, and interestingly enough, I was having a, a conversation with a good friend of mine who's in the commercial sector yesterday, and they are actually up year over year 11% from 2019. Now, despite all of the uncertainty and, of course, question marks regarding what's going to happen with office space, our retail establishment's going to go. And we're hearing all of this noise about how every single business in America is going to have to close its doors because nobody's doing anything. I'm here to report to you that there are definitely people signing leases. Landlords are getting rent from those that they're getting rent from that understand what the parameters of rent forgiveness, forbearance, and the like actually entail. And you're seeing people pivot to find ways to do business, both in the commercial sector and in the residential sector. Now, speaking of doing business, this is the, this is, this is the most glaring st statistic right now. And this is one of the things that if we could assist with our clients, it's that we're looking at nearly 40% of the population. And now this is all according to realtor.com economists and their numbers. I'll share with you the entire report. It's really fascinating con talking and considering about uh, nearly 40% of the population that is still employed has a work from home option now attached to their position. 
there's about 30% of the people that worked from home to begin with before all of this happened worked from home to begin with. But then you have this extra piece that has now almost doubled the work from home population. That's not a bad thing. That's the downside of having a touchscreen laptop. When you swipe something, you accidentally move a slide. So what you're looking at right now is the pie. 50% of people have what they are referring to as a home office. Now, guys, we all know that home office is a very nebulous term. Despite the fact that if our coaching for the clients that we're representing represents not only the fact that a if they had the opportunity to have a dedicated workspace that's the best thing number two tax implications if you are have the opportunity to work from home you need to designate that space so that you can then reap the tax benefit at the end of the year now does that does that office look as messy as mine doesn't have to but it could as long as it's just a oh, dedicated workspace, a place that you can actually go to. But what, the more glaring statistic that I'm looking at here is the 47% of people that just walk around the house trying to do work. Now, what if we're looking at 97% of this popula of this population utilizes? I mean, I would love to have the I would love to be in the 1% that utilizes their backyard or their patio for work, but that's just not happening in August in South Carolina. So, uh, it, and God bless the God bless the seven percent that moves from room to room depending on where family are. I, I totally get that. So, really, what we're seeing is basically half of the population that is working from home, and we know the glaring majority of folks that are now working from home, or at least adapting to a half in half out schedule. There's an opportunity here for us to be able to provide value in terms of helping them work through understanding that maybe the space that they're currently occupying isn't ideal for either them, their career, their family, vice versa. I mean, that's number one, the best conversation that we can have that doesn't even have diddly to do with sales at all it has everything to do with listen i know it's all been kind of funky just 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 curious are you how much how much time are you spending on working from home are you planning on working from home for longer and if so where are you spending time do you have that spot how does it feel do you feel as productive well let's get in here and figure out if there's an opportunity for us to go find a way to either help you adapt your space to make you more productive in that home office environment or Let's just start looking for a place that actually has the space to help you have a dedicated home office. I mean, that's a humongous conversation that we can be having right now. And it's not rocket science, but gosh, it, I wonder how many folks that we're dealing with on a daily basis have this on the tip of their tongue. They're just not sure, or they're just like, 47 or well the other half of the population they're dealing with it some way yes half of the folks appear as though their home office has got it's all there it's all set but is it really working for them or do they know the benefits that having a home office can have for them from a tax implication perspective i think if nothing else we owe it to ourselves and our clients to be having that conversation right now what's going on with work from home if they're doing that if they're going to the office that's great well how much are you going to the office you know i've got it, this just exactly the the conversation that i had yesterday with the friend that's 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 in the commercial space his his comment is i go to the office when i absolutely have to otherwise i'm at home and he's one of those folks that's actually utilizing the outdoor space and he and i talked about it yesterday and he said, it's, I'm not as productive. We ended up having a long conversation that we were just catching up. But it turned into the conversation of, oh, my goodness, I can cash out this much equity of my home. I can also take advantage of the fact that I can get a 15-year mortgage 
for less than 1.9% right now, we were just shooting the breeze and it turned into, okay, I think I understand this now. I think we need to go look into selling. I'll call you later. That's, that's, how, that's how much this work from home is impacting people's lives. I think we need to step into that to understand because too, we're doing it ourselves. We're experiencing the inefficiencies or the inability to do this, that, or the other. Our home internet goes down, you know, you wearing a t-shirt, whatever it might be, you know, your hair's not combed because you are an idiot and don't own a mirror. It's it, like it, any of this stuff, it, it, it all has an impact. It has a great impact both on your financial stability for a family, but also too, your mental health and well-being, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot to be said about the space that you occupy and how productive you can be as a result of it. You know, some people like to stand up, some people like to sit down, but ultimately, how many people that are right now in this 15% cohort of folks that are working from home that say they're working from their bedroom? I want to know who those people are. And I want to know what they're getting done. I don't know what industry they're in. I want to know what, the, I, I don't know what industry they're in. I'm not trying to say things, but I want to know what they're getting done. Because if it were me, I would be completely useless. Completely useless. So I think if nothing else, we owe it to ourselves and our clients to have that conversation first and foremost right now, because we already know that half the people that are working from home are in a non-ideal situation and the other half of people that are working from home might not know how to take advantage of the home office that they currently operate. That's a two-way street. There is a zero there there is a zero objection there with having how are things going and is there a way that we could make your homework situation better for you and your family. I'm going to skip back to this again, just, just because I think it's so impactful. And if you haven't had a chance to read it in its entirety, it will be in the market re in the recap afterwards, but NAR's market recovery survey, and they're calling it that for a reason, because it's showing the market's recovery. I, I noted that we talked about 8.8% year over year. It's down nationwide Greenville and in the Greenville market writ large up almost 7% year over year and us as a company we had our best march ever we had a crappy may we had the best june we've ever had in the company and followed it up with the best july ever in the company and i'll double that by saying that's on you guys and how well you're handling pivoting in this environment but two you want to look at realtor.com just because it's the best at keeping track of its data and it's not that word that starts with the letter that's at the end of the alphabet that i don't like to talk about that likes to do whatever they do with their numbers realtor.com surveys you're looking at in the month of june they set a record for unique users 85 million unique users visited realtor.com. In July, 86 million unique users visited realtor.com. It's 171 million unique users over realtor.com in a two month span of time, breaking records month over month, but also historically, the most unique users that have ever visited realtor.com in terms of pre-buying interest on the internet. And what the statistics show is that there is a drastic flight from rural to urban areas, which means major metropolitan markets are now seeing exorbitant growth. You take, for example, Arlington, Virginia, Chicago and Dallas in terms of their metro markets. The four surrounding counties around each of those metro markets are experiencing 
double digit population growth. And the major metro area is experiencing double digit negative outflow. Where we sit in terms of Greenville as a, not even an exurban landscape, but we stand as a, a tertiary urban and suburban environment. This is where our focus on creating inventory, focusing on helping folks understand how to utilize their equity in order to get more listings and also to underscore the fact that the National Association of Home Builders, you've got consumer confidence at a level that is as high as it has been since 2002 when it, reg when it relates to a home purchase. You know, almost 87% of renters surveyed say that they want to explore home ownership. Almost half of those folks cite financing availability as the biggest hindrance for them in the process. That's, that's, that's not a bad thing, but it is a roadblock. You couple that with 2008, and this is the reason why this is not 2008, is that it, at that time, you know, you had ninja loans, no income, no job, no assets. You had an amazing oversupply of inventory in the marketplace, and you had low restrictions to availability of that credit. Now you're looking at the, mi the minimum credit score for government-backed loans in the mid 600s credit scores, and for cash out refinances, you're looking in the 730 to 740 range. But you've still got consumers that want to purchase a home. Now more than ever, it's time for us to get creative. Now, whether that's get creative in terms of talking with the people that are already in our sphere or our past clients that may now be working from home and transitioning to a new situation in life, or two, talking with folks that are not currently homeowners that could be and trying to help find options for those folks that really want to own a house and view 78% of millennials view home ownership as the um, a portion of the American dream, which whew, thank goodness. And now you've got millennials having kids and bumping up their urgency in terms of purchasing a new home. There is an amazing amount of opportunity here that we can utilize, but it's all about following the smart statistics, following where the money's coming from. And you guys have heard me talk about this before, howmoneywalks.com. There's an interactive graph there that can show you what states are losing, what states are winning, down to a county level, what states are losing, what states are winning in terms of wealth being created and also in terms of population in migration and out migration. We are in a recovery. We do not have the inventory necessary to sustain the same type of recovery unless things change quickly. I'll show you here. This is just, honestly, this is just from the first seven days of August. So bear with me with the fact that we don't have a whole lot of data going on, but what we've got is days on market have dropped incredibly, almost 11%, 42 days on market. The average sales price has crested $300,000 and it's close to 310, 307, 148 thus far, seven days into August of 2020. You couple that with the fact that there are also 87 pending sales that 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 average sales price is over 200 closings just in a week in ggar couple it with 87 pendings but more interestingly enough there are since august 1st there are 76 
either withdrawn or expired listings. Depending on the situation, that now is a time again to look at how do we get creative with the folks that may have chosen to take their house off the market for the wrong reason. If they took it off for the right reason, I totally get it. There's nothing. There's 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 nothing further to conversate about. But if they took their house off the market for the wrong reason, now's the time to help them understand that it is a fantastic time for their home to stand out. They just have to do it in the right way. So basically this is this this is the whole gist of where the statistics, both nationwide and down to the local level, are taking us right now. Number one, we need to understand what people want in terms of home buying. I've gone over this a hundred different times that the, the biggest objection to your sellers not wanting to get off the fence is I would sell, but there's nothing out there for us to buy because if we want to sell, well, we're going to have to buy the exact product that we want. Well, it's helping them understand that right now, buyers are being so much more flexible in terms of longer closing periods, identification periods whereby we take the offer and you will accept the offer, but we've got two weeks or three weeks to identify a property to purchase. Or we sell, we get the, con get the contract signed, done, delivered. We're going to rent for the next three months after closing to give us more time to find a house. Buyers are willing to do that to get under contract for the home that they want because they realize just the same exact way that a hesitant seller realizes there's nothing else for sale out there. And if they find the right thing, that's the right thing. But it's not an option unless it's an option. So it's time for us to get creative and it's also time for us to lean in on what consumer sentiment is really telling us. And it's point blank period. It's a home, it's a home office or a space that is amenable to a home office. It's larger yard space or access to collective outdoor space. And it's a big kitchen. That's the number one goal for us right now is to really dig in on and I think these reports will help you a lot in understanding this is what people want and really our job at the end of the day is to get people what they want. That's how we keep the ball moving forward and that's how we continue to help housing and the housing market lead us forward as we continue to climb economically out of this situation that we've been dealt. That's all I got. I hope that was helpful information. I'm gonna tag all this stuff that I've referenced in the recap and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day unless there are any questions. All right. Thank you much. Have a great rest of your Friday.